Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeremy Epstein. I'm the VP of Marketing at Sprinkler. We're very honored to be joined by an all-star panel of uh, social practitioners from some of the largest brands in uh, America. Today, we're going to be talking about the challenges that large brands face with the arise of the empowered customer and the potential disruption that that creates for large companies. There's a big difference between doing social and being social. We're going to be talking about both of those. So first, let's talk about what it means to do social. It looks like it's easy on the surface, but Frank, what are you seeing? What are the challenges that you guys are doing to start tackling this issue of doing social effectively? Um, my name is Frank Elias, and I'm uh, director of global social media for City. And you know, as we look at this global brand, the customer views us as one brand, not by country. Uh, the challenge is, you know. We're regulated business and regulations vary across all aspects of the globe. So what you can do with customers, how you interact with them is going to change. And you know, before you think, oh, that's a regulated business, I would actually challenge all businesses have a lot of these laws that are different and you have to look at each country for those laws. So you know, what we're doing is we're starting to create a community centered around helping customers in this space and you know, we're, we're understanding those laws and working more as one entity in the same way our customers view us. And it, it's a challenge. I'm not gonna sit and say it's you know, going to be an overnight transition. It's going to take a long time, uh, but with certain tools, you can actually make that happen. Hi, I'm Greg Garrick. I'm the social media leader for 3M. Uh, my Twitter handle is at GGarrick. I think what 3M is doing is we're taking a sort of a holistic approach. We have uh, products in every single category in almost every single industry from uh, medical products to dental fillings to street signs to scotch tape and post-it notes. But throughout all of those innovations, we're trying to connect the consumer to the story behind the technologies that drive the innovation at 3M. And to do that, we've created a center of excellence around our global e-transformation team to allow 3M to become more digitally enabled to support our global teams so we can do everything that we've done before to connect to the customer just in a more digitally enabled way. Hi, I'm Eric Nice from a director of social media at Dell. My Twitter handle is e uh, Eric Nice from Says. And you know what we found at Dell is that the conversations in social and our customers are talking about varying things about our business. It's really not just about marketing. It really transcends marketing. It touches all aspects of mm -hmm. our business. So as a result, we understood the need that we need to scale social across our business. Mm -hmm. uh, but in order to do so, we also had to have a centralized organization that allowed us to govern and have some consistency across the enterprise. Um, and so that we had a common voice, a common way of doing social, common platform strategy. Um, but it is important that we enable and empower not only our employees, but which we do, not, not over 9,000 of them today, but also the business units and departments to in listen, engage, and act uh, really around the initiatives that are important to them and, 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 and their connection with their customers. So you actually raised a very, a very critical point, which is that you need unprecedented levels of collaboration across the enterprise. And that is a prerequisite in many respects for what customers today expect as empowered and in their relationships. So Raji, I want to turn to you to help frame up doing social versus being social and customers' expectations today. So what we're seeing across uh, the 350 or so brands that we work with is a recognition of the complexities of social. So you see the obvious listen, respond, engage, and reporting, or maybe social apps. But what we're seeing, increasingly large companies come to the conclusion that there's a whole set of needs below the waterline. Mm -hmm. Compliance, when you put a thousand people on, governance, how do I get content to them? So do I have an asset management infrastructure? How do I run a campaign that everyone can participate in? Um, and, and a whole bunch of security requirements <laughs> that I'm sure Frank's very familiar with. Um, that needs to work together to create an infrastructure that then you can use to drive your business goals. And what we're seeing is to, to move, there's a lot of complexity in just doing social, but once you're there and you have the infrastructure and you've trained your people and you have the processes, you can start being social, which requires three things. One, being able to see a unified context of your social customer to being able to speak with one unified brand voice, and three, some consistent analytics across your teams, your departments, mm -hmm. your divisions and locations, which is easy for us to say, 
but as this gentleman will attest, very hard for large global companies. So let's actually start with Eric on this one. Obviously, there's the, the technology platform that enables that, but that's only part of the story. You need uh, a whole set of people and, and strategies and cross-functional, uh, cross cross-team, cross-division coordination and agreement that we all have to work around the social customer. Right. So what have you guys done to start building that consensus and start transcending the silos that have been built up for years? Well, you made some really good points, right? I mean, the first is you really have to have a strong policy um, and strong principles and then a strong governance model uh, to support this and then in a strong training and education model to empower, right? Um, and so we, we have that in place. I mean, we have a very holistic model to social, but we do have a centralized team that provides that policy, governance, advisory, and support. But they also manage a council model, right, where we do have connectors and, and relationships with all the organizations that are having social activities within their business units. I'll give you a really good example. Um, you know, we have a, a, a VP of one of our largest um, uh, organizations, and he, we saw the value that, like you said, you know, you got to have consistency of message for your customers across your different disciplines. And he saw that it was important for us in, in his organization to be socially enabled. And so he actually has put into the performance plans of his employees, all 250 of them to be socially enabled. Mm, and wow. then we took his employees and we started to segment them into different parts of social. Like, you know, are they going to be providing thought leadership? Are they going to be helping with customer engagement and or, or customer support? And then we actually started to integrate them with those other business units we have that are doing those activities so that we can really get that consistency of voice and consistency of messaging across the different disciplines. It's <laughs> really cool. I haven't, yeah. We might have to follow up on that one later. <laughs> Greg. We, we're looking at a new uh, social commercialization program. We call it SCOLA. And it sort of sets the roadmap for how our businesses and divisions can become socially enabled. So th when they look at um, what they want to do as a campaign or a tactic, we roll them all the way back to the beginning mm -hmm. and we show them all the successes that other groups have had and how they can truly socialize their business. Because we've found a lot of success in um, either product development or um, other areas of the company that need those customer insights and that data. And to be able to show them how everything fits together through our SCOLA process uh, has been very, a very successful model for us and how we're going to digitally transform our enterprise. Mm -hmm. Well, back in you know, 2007, 2008, when we first started in social media, we always talked about how this changes how we do business. Mm -hmm. This isn't about marketing mm -hmm. or PR. And I think what's going on over the past few years it really became about marketing, mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> good, bad, or ugly. Uh, and I would say at this point, you know, companies are realizing this is much bigger than all this. Their employees are already out there speaking, and so for many companies, it's going to be backtracking, relooking at these policies. I, I would make the case it's it's actually training your employees, not about social media and your brand, as much as why social media might be for them. You know, what do they need to know? What do they need to understand about it? but then also working in these other brand elements. We have to think very differently as businesses. And you know, ultimately, if you study any brand in social, the brand that's there, it's really the culture that you have as a company. It's not right. your message. Uh, and so if you really want to have a different message out there, you have to change that culture. Mm -hmm. uh, so it starts really from that perspective in this one holistic look. And that's not how we traditionally look to businesses. And I'd say, you know, for our city, it's a, it's a longer term transition. It's not going to happen overnight, but we recognize we need to do it. And, you know, looking at it from that customer's eyes and, you know, looking at it from the employee's eyes and how we mesh the two. So we're going to have to follow up on that. A lot of follow ups. <laughs> and you're totally right about, about that. So for the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people <laughs> watching this video right now, I mean, hold the tweets. No, keep them coming. You know, the, the thing I would like to end up, end our, our conversation with is, you know, if you were going to give advice to someone who's sitting in your seat at another large brand where you just said, look, it starts at the top. It's about mm -hmm. understanding this. And we hear all the time, you know, more often than not, our C-suite's not quite on board yet. They're still mm -hmm. coming around. It's taking time. What do I do? How do you mm -hmm. help your fellow, whatever the word, I don't want to say revolutionaries, <laughs> but you know what I mean, your, your compadres. Um, advance it in a way that's consistent with your experiences and, and, and I guess why don't we start with Raji with what you've seen and then we'll come down the line and finish it up. 
Yeah, social is not about social anymore. Once mm -hmm. you put the infrastructure down, let's start driving business results. Mm -hmm. And you start talking about the real voice of your customer. These are not strangers, this is not a tweet, it's them speaking. Mm -hmm. These are not Twitter profiles, it's actually one of your customers. And that realization will open up the C-suite thinking into we gotta do something. Yeah, but you know, one of the things is we've always said about social, it's about listening. You've heard listening a few different times in here. You know, it, it's about listening, but the fact is we've been listening for the wrong things. We've been listening for that next brand crisis as opposed to actually truly listening to our customers. And by the way, not just in social, across the board. What I've always found, you want to start changing things. You really need to take your brand story and share it as it truly is mm -hmm. upward. And those stories will drive change. Marketers, great storytellers. You have the ability to really lead your organization uh, by telling the true story within and you will see change happen dramatically well and i know i'm going to do a plug for your book if that's okay <laughs> yeah. so it's a, buy frank's book at your service because as you well know the customer's a service experience more often than not is going to create the story that people will tell or retell one for better or for worse it's yeah. not even about social service it's about right. servicing them right the that's first exactly time right. and actually giving them reason to talk positively about your brand mm -hmm. uh, you know companies aren't really at that level yet right. and i think they're that's where we're headed and then you had a great post the other day about the, the call center. So mm -hmm. read the post, then buy the book. <laughs> and then write a book, Greg, and we'll push it. Oh. <laughs> In the process. All right, yeah. um, 3M, the way we look at it is it's not, it, social's not anything new. We've always been telling stories. Brands have always been talking about themselves. They've always been talking about what they can do for the customer. We've always been trying to connect to the customer. We just have new ways to do it. We have new tools at our disposal, and those tools come with different rules and different ways we have to manage them across the enterprise. So it's just about sort of pivoting around, no pun intended, to, to, to the point of us being able to use those new tools in new ways. And if I can, can I do a pitch for you as well? Sure. The yeah. video that 3M put together about the founder, t tell that super quick and where people can find it because it's a great video. It's not publicly available except unless uh, you have the link. I'll retweet it out later this week. Just but ask Greg. Uh, just it. ask Greg. Um, but it is, it's, what we did is we took the, the, found, the first president of 3M, uh, William McKnight, and we recreated his Twitter handle from 1907. <laughs> <laughs> it's very and carried through the history of our company, but that, again, tied to our culture. It ties to innovation and showing 3M is still the yeah. social company that we were from the very beginning. So exclusive offer for viewers. Exclusive there offer for viewers. <laughs> Eric. Sure. So, you know, it, it's not really about ROI. It's really about the business value of social, right? Because mm -hmm. social really touches yeah. every aspect of the customer life cycle, right? Mm -hmm. And kind of to Frank's point, I mean, you know, at Dell, much of the genesis of our program came out of customer care, mm -hmm. right? And so we are able to prove the value in customer care. Um, but we are, we are able to prove you know, the, and quantify the business value at every aspect of the customer life cycle. But I think it's important also to understand that it's really not about social, it's really about building long-term relationships with your customers, right? And it's really, for us, it's a perspective of going back to the concept of the neighborhood business, right? Mm -hmm. It's about mm -hmm. having that convenience, having that personalization, and, and building you know, those relationships with the customers based on on their likes and interests and, and, make, and, and making recommendations and taking their suggestions and kind of going back yeah. to that concept. That's exactly, in fact, we, we often say that the, the central challenge now for large companies is to marry social in those neighborhood businesses with scale. Right, right? scalable build, intimacy. Scalable intimacy or build <laughs> real human. Exactly, awesome. uh, that was Frank's concept and you know, build real authentic relationships at scale. Mm -hmm. So with that, let's go one more time. Your Twitter handle, just in case we get all these followers. Eric Nystrom says. G. Garrick. At Frank Eliason, well Frank Eliason. At Raji Thomas. Yeah, <laughs> so with that, I wanna thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday and whenever time you watch us. And a thanks to our phenomenal panel for your insights. And uh, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.